Ce stage est vraiment exceptionnel parce qu'on a l'occasion pour la première fois en Belgique de fabriquer soi-même du parchemin. C'est vraiment en fabriquant du parchemin qu'on se rend compte qu'est-ce que c'est le parchemin. Ben, c'est une chance unique et euh, je suis ravie d'être là. Expérience unique. Non, vraiment, en un mot, je ne sais pas dire. C'est plus physique que ça n'en a l'air. On peut vraiment euh, plonger, euh, pl plonger dans la matière. Et on se rend compte ici, on est vraiment dans une expérience de connaissances concrètes. Cet atelier euh, s'inscrit dans le cadre du projet Pergamenum 21, qui est en fait un, un, un projet de recherche euh, transdisciplinaire autour du parchemin, qui est financé par l'Université de Namur hein, euh, depuis de, euh, quelques années maintenant. Et plus concrètement aussi, il fait suite euh, à la conférence euh, que nous avons organisée euh, euh, fin novembre 2019, qui s'appelait la physique du parchemin. Comme c'est un projet transdisciplinaire, il est clair que ce que ça nous apporte dépend de l'interaction qu'on a avec nos, avec nos collègues. Hein, donc ça, c'est vraiment important. Alors maintenant, si je regarde d'un point de vue un peu plus disciplinaire, par exemple, je prends l'exemple de la physique, ben, ce qui nous intéresse, c'est euh, ce matériau parchemin, de pouvoir le caractériser en termes de contraintes, ses propriétés optiques, etc. Alors pour ce qui est des historiens et des médiévistes en particulier, alors contrairement à l'image d'Épinal où on pense qu'on connaît tout sur la fabrication du parchemin, comment étaient assemblés les cahiers, etc., il y a encore beaucoup, beaucoup de, 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 de points d'interrogation. Et donc là, ça leur, ça leur permet de mieux comprendre comment finalement on, euh, on construisait un livre, comment on sélectionnait les pots sur base de quels critères, etc. Donc voilà un peu pour ce que apporte euh, ce projet aux physiciens, aux historiens, et on peut décliner la même chose du point de vue de la chimie, du point de vue de la biologie, etc. The parchment was used for many centuries and then became the main writing support for the Christian text. It's of course not the only material which was used for writing. Before parchment we have papyrus, we have clay tablets and after uh, 15th century was parchment mostly replaced by the paper. If we study the parchment and the manuscript we can actually learn a lot of information about the actual process of the parchment making. If we follow the traces of the tools and various imperfections, we can reconstruct some parts of the methods. That's the one point. The other thing is, of course, we can study the animals and find out what was the primary material for uh, uh, parchment, which of course changed in different historical periods, but also in different regions of uh, Europe. This workshop is mostly to understand what you can see in the manuscript when you study parchment. But the best way how to learn it, that you make your own parchment and you see all your mistakes and various defects which you cause during the production. And then of course you can observe them in the manuscripts as well as you can observe a various animal parts and that's the best way to do it by your own hands. Okay, so come with us. The manufacture of parchment involves many stages. Following the butchering, the skins of goats and sheep are collected in the slaughterhouse. They're immersed in a bath of lime liquor. This step is called unhairing. The skins stay there for one to four weeks. The skin is placed on a beam to be dislodged. We also say unfold. The hairs are removed by hand or with a blunt-edged knife to obtain a smooth surface called the grain surface. As the knife does not cut, there's no risk of tearing the skin, but you must not go too far and risk damaging it on the surface. So you have to squeeze just enough, but not too much. The skin is then turned over to the epidermis side, the flesh surface, for the fleshing step. 
a sharpened knife is used. We remove all the remaining residues, flesh, muscle and fat. You should know that the skin is very greasy. This is a time-consuming operation. You have to be extremely careful and meticulous. All the small pieces of flesh and residues are removed here in order to avoid defects, which could interfere with the writing on the parchment. Before being attached to a rectangular wooden frame, the skin is rinsed or washed in clean water, then spread out. It must be well centered before being stretched. For this, we use small smooth pebbles about the size of a marble. They're wrapped in the soft skin tissue. It is in some way imprisoned by making a slip knot with a cord. And then, really make sure. Now you're doing well, both. The idea is to stretch the skin first on the north, south, east, west axes and then on the four angles, so that it is evenly stretched and takes the flattest possible shape. The tension of the strings must be strong enough. We must think of the future parchment. <laughs> All these gestures are ancestral. Another technique is to fix the skin on a circular frame made of flexible wood. It's similar to the rectangular frame, but the tensioning is done by turning the cord several times around the hoop. The different turns overlap so that the cords can self-lock in a way. The frame will deform a little bit, no problem. While still stretched over its frame, we remove the last traces of flesh from the skin using a two-handled crescent-shaped knife, the lunellum, which can have different sizes. At this point, the skin is still very wet. If the room temperature is too high, it's necessary to water regularly or rehumidify so that the skin does not dry out. Chalk is then spread called groison. The chalk will whiten the skin, opacify it, degrease it, also regulate humidity and allow gradual drying. It will limit the porosity of the parchment and prevent the running and poor adhesion of ink. Before its final drying, the skin will be thoroughly cleansed and intensely tightened. The tension must be well and consistently distributed in order to obtain a quality parchment. If you write on the chart, chart paper, it's... For sanding, a crescent-shaped knife is used. Different types of knife, larger or smaller, exist. Again, this operation requires a lot of rigor, time and patience. High precision is also required, not to damage the skin. Natural pumice is also used. Sanding is also very important. It will give the skin a smooth appearance. Again, this operation takes time and also requires care and a lot of energy. The skin, which has remained very tense, is delicately cut with a cutter or with a very sharp blade, following the edges as much as possible. After long, precise, meticulous work, where patience is essential, we obtain an extremely thin parchment with a flat surface. And to think that the oldest are over 2,000 years old and still remain the best preserved writing media we have known to date. <laughs>